belongs to him, you ought not keep it. You ought to give it to him. If you believe that he truly deserves it, you ought to give it to him. The Lord has blessed us and he has brought us to the very first Sunday in this 2024. And I owe him just as much praise today as I did on December 30th and 31st. want to quote him he's deceased I don't want to quote him but uh, Prince came out with a song about 1999 and I know the Lord has brought us way further than 1999 but we still want to give him a 1967 pity pat praise John chapter 3, I recognize that the assignment today uh, is that of a uh, teaching assignment, uh, and so I won't, uh, I won't, I won't hold you long. Uh, that may not be what I want to say, but uh, I won't kill a lot of time. I'll just jump right into into the assignment. We honor God. We're so thankful <clears throat> to him and for the blessings that he has uh, given unto us uh, for allowing us to have uh, this particular moment in time. Uh, so grateful and thankful uh, to him uh, for giving you help, strength, uh, and your mind uh, to come to the Lord's house. Uh, so that we can celebrate uh, the Lord together. Uh, listen, um, in John chapter 3, uh, John chapter 3, uh, allow me to begin reading. It says, Now uh, there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, uh, a ruler of the Jews. Uh, this man came to Jesus uh, by night uh, and said unto him rabbi uh, we know that uh, you are uh, that you have come from God as a teacher for no one uh, can do uh, these signs that you do unless God is with him uh, Jesus answered and said unto him truly truly I say to you uh, unless one is born again, say born again, he cannot see uh, the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter, uh, they're okay, he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb uh, and be born, can he? Uh, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say unto you, uh, unless, here it is again, one is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter uh, into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, makes sense. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I got it now. Uh, do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. Let's go even further. The wind bloweth where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes. That's powerful. From and where it it. And where it is going, so is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus says unto him, how can these things be? Jesus just simply answered unto him, 
are you that teacher <laughs> are you a teacher of Israel and you do not understand these things truly I say unto you we speak of what we know and we testify what we have seen and you do not accept our testimonies if I told you earthly things then you would have you would not believe how will you believe if I tell Tell you heavenly things no one has ascended unto the heaven but he who has descended from the heavens which is simply the son of man and watch this final verse as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up even so must the son of man be lifted up uh, thus ends the reading of our Lord's holy word thank you Ursus. you may be seated we are uh, in the midst of a uh, conversation uh, some of us have uh, been conversing uh, back and forth uh, with others back and forth uh, even as it pertains to uh, conversations we have uh, on our job or conversations uh, we have with others uh, and um, sometimes we uh, are trying to pinpoint what's really uh, going on in the world Sometimes we ask questions um, like what's wrong with these young folk. Uh, sometimes we ask questions like I cannot believe uh, that that happened, especially in our community. Or why is she doing that? Or even perhaps why is he uh, doing that? There was a time that when we heard uh, the destruction of people's lives, we could automatically assume that it did not come from us. Um, but some stories we knew it came from them. But in this season now, it's kind of a slippery slope, if you will, because it seemed like we are just as crazy as others. And so in this season, we have to learn how not, someone say not, not put our mouth on others and on other folk. We have to learn uh, how to go to what I believe is the root of the problem. Uh, we cannot go and tell them to pull it up. We cannot no longer go and tell them to take it out. We cannot no longer tell them to put it out. We cannot no longer uh, tell them to cut them off. We have to learn how to go to the root of the problem and deal with the true issue that is going on in our and in this world community. Uh, I, I know you don't understand it but give me the latitude of just sharing with you what God has shared unto me so if we cannot put our mouth on them and if we should not uh, point out their highlights because uh, uh, if we are pointing out uh, their highlights trust me we have mm -hmm, highlights ourselves <laughs> and we have things that we too have to brush up dust off clean up first and leave at the altar so if we cannot point at them because they are doing that simply because we are doing this then what can we do we can go to the heart of the issue I believe that what this world needs now more than anything at all is a fresh relationship with the Lord I, I believe what the youth needs now more than ever 
never before is to be introduced to one that is able to do anything but fail. I believe that they need a new high. <laughs> Y'all gonna get that going home. I, I believe that they need a, a, a new person to rock with. I believe that they need a, a new person to uh, play on the games with. So thus the Holy Spirit has arrested me, Jamal, and he has brought me uh, to this particular passage, but not only this passage, but this particular series. We're going to be dealing over the next couple of sermons about the foundation of faith. The foundation of faith. I, I know it wasn't going to make you shout. I get that. I, I know you wasn't going to get uh, no goosebumps going up and down your, your, your arm, your neck. I get that. But the foundation of faith is so critical and so important because if there's going to be a change in their life, it has to be a change from the ground up. Come on up in here. We can no longer get to them after they've messed up. We got to put something in them that will carry them to the place of making a decision to either do left or do right. We have to put the word in them. Somebody say put the word in them. Uh, my goal today, my goal today is for each and every last one of us who claims to be a child of God when you leave out of this house today, you're going to leave out of this house here it is, knowing that you are saved. Is there anybody here? Not, 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 not watch this, watch this. The word save is such a unusual word. I know I hadn't given you a subject, we'll get there. The word save is such a churchy term. The word save is su such, uh, it, it really, we don't like that word in this generation because for us to say that we need to be saved means that we have to admit that we have a problem. <laughs> for us to say we need to be saved, meaning that we can no longer pull ourselves up, redress ourselves, refix ourselves, repush ourselves, rebrand ourselves. For us to say we need to be saved, it suggests that we need someone, here it is in a nutshell, higher than us, that knows more than us, that is stronger than us, that is able to come and help us. Are y'all going to get that going home? For us to say that we need to be saved means that we are lost. And I suggest to you that we are living in a community full of lost folks. I suggest to you that we are working on jobs full of lost folk. I suggest to you that we're looking at the Fox News and CNN and we're looking at folk who are not safe. And so when we're looking at John chapter 3, John chapter 3 is going to give you a foundation for you you to know that number one you are saved someone say I need to know that I'm saved most of the time we don't mind we don't mind saying uh, that I am a member of such and such church that's kind of a of a cop out I'm glad that you are a member uh, of, of, of such and such church and most of you as I scan the audience I would say about 99% of you would testify that I I am a member of Christians United Church. Glad to see you. Come on back next Sunday. Uh, but even if you're not a part of the 99%, uh, let me give you this figure. Figure number one, that there are 80% of Americans that don't mind telling you that I am a member of such and such church. Well, just because you're a member of the church still don't mean you are saved. Y'all gonna get that going home. 86% of Americans will testify that I'm a member of the church. 71% will testify that Jesus, here it is, is my Lord. But just because they say he's their Lord, the 71% of Americans does not mean that he controls their movement. Y'all gonna get that going home. 
63% of America will not even announce that they're saved because to suggest that I'm saved automatically puts a spotlight on you and a bullseye on your back. When you say you are saved, that means that people now look at you and they demand more out of you because you are claiming to be a child of the king. Come here, let me help you out. When you tell your co-worker you're saved, what you're literally telling your co-worker is is you can cuss me and I won't cuss you back. You can poke me and I won't poke you back. Can I help somebody out up in here? I don't know what kind of salvation that is because in this season I'm going to give you what you give me. <laughs> in this season I'm matching vibe for vibe. In this season it's help. Okay, all right, that may not be what I want to do. But we have, watch this now, 63% who don't even want to say that they're saved. Are you still listening to me? We have even lesser, 49% Jada, that says that I am not saved and I, I am not a member of the church, but they claim to be a disciple. And a disciple is none other uh, than a studier of him. Now, here it is, here it is. You may be a disciple, but the question is not your ability to be a disciple. The question is the ability of who him is you are studying up under. <laughs> yeah, because some of us uh, are learners uh, and students of people who we have placed over our lives and in our lives uh, as little G-O-Ds. Uh, you might be a disciple. You might be a student. You might be a studier of, but the question is, who's the of? <laughs> some of y'all up in here, if he tells you to jump, you jump. Uh, some of you in here, if she says move, you'll move. Uh, some of you in here say, if Dylan's got a say, are you getting your checkbook? Come on, talk up in here. But here it is. Those folk may be uh, the personnel or the people that you are studying up under. I suggest unto you, you keep studying up, up under them. But here's the question you need to ask them. And here's the question. Are you ready for the question? Ask them when you get up under them, do you have a heaven to put me in? Oh, that's the wrong person. That's the wrong person. You need to go back and ask them if they have that kind of control over your situation, then you need to make sure that they also have preparation for you when you leave this earth, when you're going somewhere else. Okay, y'all don't want to talk to me. I need to suggest to somebody in this place, you didn't come here to stay. I need to suggest to somebody in this place, you're going to leave here. I need to suggest to somebody in this place, don't take up too much credit over here, baby. Because soon and very soon, if he does not come back to rapture the church, all of us are going to have to face an hour where we're going to transition out of here. And I want to transition, Alvin, with somebody who is going away to prepare a place for me. I want to transition with somebody who is already, come on up in here, paving the streets with gold. I want to transition with somebody who's already making uh, a mansion in the sky with my name on it. I know y'all don't want to hear that. I want to transition with somebody who has my abode, my room, and he's already fixed it so that when I move from earth to bright glory, I have no problem. And so we have people who are at this place that claim to be a disciple, but I I wonder who you are a disciple up under. Are you still listening to me, to me up in here? If you don't mind, help me preach this little passage of scripture and say, Lord, I want to know how to be saved. That's what I want to talk about today. How do I get, get saved? Now, now, Nicodemus has come to our Lord and our Savior at an unusual hour. The text suggests he comes to Jesus by night. Uh, he comes to him by night. <clears throat> I did not beat Nicodemus up Wednesday night because I simply said that perhaps Nicodemus is working. Perhaps because he is on the Sanhedrin council. He had 
business matters to attend during the day. Perhaps because he was a Jew suggests to me that he had a thriving career and so he could not come at an at a appropriate time when others came to Jesus. Are you still here? I did not beat him up Wednesday night because I wanted to suggest to some and introduce to others uh, that when it comes to your salvation, uh, I know you ain't going to like this, it makes no difference when you come to him. <clears throat> What's important is that you just come. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I got that's why I got happy right there. That's why I, I got happy right there. Because when I came to him, uh, I, I came to him, watch this now, just as I was, without one plea, filthy, dirty, messed up. As a matter of fact, when I came to him, I was drunk. <laughs> as a matter of fact, when I came to him, I was buzzing. I know y'all don't want to hear the truth. When I really came to him, I was toe up from the flow up, but I'm so grateful that when I did make it to him. He did not have a sign that says close for the evening. I'm so glad that when I did make it to him, I did not have to worry about him turning me around and say I'm out for lunch. I'm so glad when I came to him, I came to him and he was ready to deal with me on the level that I was on. We have to learn as the body of Christ not to be so bougie and act so bourgeois when it comes to folk trying to come to Jesus. Maybe they didn't come when you came, but thank God they are on their way. Look at your neighbor and say, don't get so messed up in here. See, when we came to Jesus, we came to the mourner's bench. Come on, I'm talking to somebody. When we came to Jesus, we came during the revival. Is there anybody here? When we came to Jesus, my mama told me, this is your moment. When we came to Jesus, Reb looked at me with those big eyes and said, will there be one? When we came to Jesus, none of us had a chance or a moment to make our own mind. Are y'all here? We just came. Can I help you out up in here? I'm telling you, now this is the honest God truth. Heaven is rejoicing over all of us who came to Jesus on Sunday morning service. <laughs> oh, y'all missed it up in here. But the same heaven and the same angels are still rejoicing for the rest of them that came at night. Oh, y'all missed it up in here. I'll do it again for those of you who missed the trip. I'll say it this way this time. Watch this, Sister Hires. Jesus and angels are shouting over the righteous that came during the day, but he's still shouting over folk who came at night. He's still shouting over folk who came to him without addictions just as he's still shouting over folk who came to him with addiction he's shouting over folk who got their life together and still came even though he's shouting over folk who don't know how to make ends meet he's shouting over every individual that has made up in their mind being led by the auction of Oh, I'm finna get mad. I'm finna get somebody mad here. By the unction of the Holy Ghost uh, and give their life to Christ, he's still shouting over the one. Now, can I suggest something to this quiet Presbyterian church this morning? That if heaven is shouting over one, then why in the hell are you so quiet when someone give their life to Christ? Why do you act like we don't have the same right to praise God when somebody give their life? I feel I, I, I feel like since it slipped since, since it slipped brother hand for the hatchet uh, I might get punished for that one she she, she may not want to feed me my soup and salad uh, are y'all praying for me so I won't slip again so I can get some soup and salad 
appreciate it. We have to learn that we no longer can control how they come. If we are going to control how they become members of CUC, then we might as well not call it a church, but call it a social gathering place. When we get so stuck on wanting to get the higher or the, or the top tier of folk to bring into the church and then we overlook the low hanging fruit, then we cease to become a church. When we only want to get folk who wear Sunday suits, come on up in here, but don't want to go get the people who still wear jeans and Jordans, then we cease to be a church. When we only want to get folk who have on stockings that you cannot see through, but we don't want to go after saints who still just put Vaseline on their legs and come to church, then we cease to be effective as a church. Are y'all still up in here? When we don't want to go get the people who have tattoos and piercings all over and everywhere, but we want to go get the folk who still look like Mau Mau and Pau Pau Nim, then we cease to be effective as a church. Can I help you all out up in here? When we pray for Christians United, we are not only praying that God brings our old faithful members back, but we are also praying that God brings crack addicts back, that God brings weed heads back, that God brings alcoholics back, that God, br I wish I had help in this place. Can I suggest something to you? It's more unsaved folk out there than it is saved folk out there, and we need unfold, unsaved folk in here to hear this glorious gospel. Help me out in here. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Now that we establish he came to him by night, let's look at the conversation. Because the conversation uh, is about new birth. The conversation is somewhat different because Nicodemus comes to him and watch this now, Brother Reynolds. He recognized that or some kind of way, although he's unsaved, uh, he's inquisitive. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. He, 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 he's, not, he's not all the way on the deacon board, but he's looking at the rituals, rules, and teachings of the deacon's ministry. <laughs> He's not ordained, but he showed like how real preach. And so there's something about him, Jesus, that made Nicodemus uh, inquisitive for whatever reason. Because watch this now, before he showed up to uh, Jesus he came with some preconceived information are you here this is what he says he says right there in verse 2 uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and here's what he says unto him first of all he calls him rabbi <laughs> he acknowledges uh, that he's not an ordinary man I wish I could preach that he, he, he acknowledges that there's something different about him. He acknowledges that Jesus is more than just an ordinary individual. He acknowledges that is something out of the ordinary about this particular man called Jesus. Now, did I tell you that he came to him uh, inquisitive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wonder, I just wondered this morning, how did you come to Jesus? I just wonder, I, I just wondered this morning, how did you come into his house? I, I, I just wonder, did you hear any rumors that led you to come to his house to seek him? What kind of rumors? I mean, did he heal somebody in your family? Did he deliver a friend of yours? Did he make a way for somebody you know? What, what, what? 
caused you to get up and come to the Lord's house? What, what, what made you come? Listen, was it your testimony of your mama? Did your mama tell you that he's a mighty good friend? Did your daddy tell you he'll be a bridge over troubled water? Did the preacher tell you he'll heal your body? Did, did, did grandma and them tell you there's nobody like King Jesus? I want to know what made you come to his house uh, and seek him because you need to know that there's something unique about him. Let me go a little further in this particular passage of scripture. Now I know uh, that when Satan does not want teaching mm -hmm, to go forth, it never fails. It never fails me. He always gets uh, tangled up in my in my mouth, uh, and so I could shut my mouth uh, and then don't get what God word needs to go for. But can I suggest something to you today? Not today, boo boo, <laughs> because I'm gonna preach it. If I gotta preach it, sitting down and talking my way all the way through it. He came to Jesus. Here it is by night. He calls him rabbi, and now watch what he says. For we know <laughs> that. Here it is that 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 you are a teacher number one that has come from God because nobody could do what you've done here to four. Now I, I said this Wednesday and I guess I'll slide it in now. What does Nicodemus mean that you are a teacher that has come from God because no man has done these signs these miracles before uh, can, I, can I open this up for a few seconds this is John chapter 3 <clears throat> and, and so now since it's the beginning of chapter 3 I, I need to investigate what happened in chapter 2 to suggest that Nicodemus knows about the miracles <laughs> and, and the signs that Jesus has performed. Watch this now. Number one, here's the miracle. And number two, here's the sign. Are you ready for it? The miracle, number one, and the sign, number two, is nothing but here it is. Jesus shows up at a wedding feast in chapter two, where Jesus turns water into wine in chapter two, where Jesus shows up at a religious ceremony uh, 7 to 40 day old block party yeah, yeah. <laughs> where he showed up at mega fest okay that may not be it where he showed up uh, uh, down there on December 31st where they let the moon pie drop <laughs> you know, maybe that's not it but all I can tell you that Jesus showed up at a show social function and he was not trying to condemn the folk but he came there there to blend in with the folk so he can show the folk who he really is. I wish y'all would catch that. And if we stop being so stuck on who we are, every time we go to a party, we want the folk to know that I'm a child of the king. Every time we go to a social function, we want to announce who we are. We want to put a title on our car, a fish on our bumper, clergy collar around our neck. Uh, y'all up in here. Sometimes you just need to go to the party and sit your happy self down and when Holy Ghost gets ready for them to know who you are he'll bring them to you I wish I had help Jesus did not go looking for nobody at the party he waited till somebody had a need and they sent for him are you listening to me up in here every now and then we gotta get to the place where we just gotta sit still and wait on the Holy Ghost to use us in such an unusual way because the Holy Ghost is only going to do what the Holy Ghost needs to do when the Holy Ghost needs to do it. So Nicodemus heard that number one, he's from heaven. Number two, he's a, a teacher that's sent from God. Number three, ain't nobody did a miracle like that uh, that I know of in life. I think y'all miss your cue to shout. Nicodemus said these signs, these miracles. The miracle was that he didn't pay for good wine, but he got good wine for free. The miracle was he wasn't expecting it but God blessed him anyhow the miracle was he ain't never 
had top shelf in his life but when Jesus showed up he got top shelf y'all gonna get that going home sometimes you got to get excited over the miracles that he's working in your life although it may not seem like a miracle you got to call it like you see it can I help you out up in here you should have got excited that he gave you health and strength to get your raggedy dusty tail up this morning they're folk in the nursing home that wish they could be here you got to get excited don't go there yet you got to get excited because there are folk in jail wish they could be here but they can't but you are here you got to get excited there's a 19 year old boy on a cool cold slab because a 16 year old boy took his life but here you are in the Lord's house with all of your family and you can't get excited over a miracle the devil is a lie is there anybody here can tell God thank you God I thank you for touching my body these miracles nobody could do what you've done except for he who has come from heaven oh I wish I had time he acknowledges that Jesus rabbi teacher has come from heaven he says, because nobody could do what you've done. What you smiling for, baby? Don't do that now. <laughs> I see you smiling. Uh, this ain't time. Don't play with me. Uh, no one has done or can do what you've done uh, except he has come from heaven. Are you still with me? So he keeps going. He says, I recognize that you're doing these marvelous things. Watch verse 3. But Jesus turns around and deals with him. He says, Nicodemus, here it is in a nutshell, truly, truly, homeboy, look here, Nick, I tell you the truth. I'm going to say this to you. Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. He goes on to have the same conversation with him a second time, Clarence Jones, and he says, now, unless you are born again, you won't even enter. Okay, okay, all right, all right. You won't see it, and neither will you enter. I want to shout right there, but before I shout, I need to press uh, this impartation in your mind unless you can see it you'll never be able to enter into it let me try it again if you don't get this foundation right meaning salvation you ain't got to worry about trying to see what God is getting ready to do and you show sure enough no you ain't finna walk in what he's doing. So thus you can stop testifying to everybody and say the Lord blessed me anyway. Because God has two wills. He has a permissive will where he allows certain things to go on in your life anyhow. But when you're in his will, he'll take the negative stuff that is going on in your life and flip that thing around and make it work out for your good he says you won't see it and God knows you won't be able to enter it here it is Maurice because you have to be saved can we can we finish right there you got to be saved can I say it one more time to get you real aggravated you have to be saved. There's no way around trying to see the things of God and then enter into the will of God unless you are saved. 
So salvation has to be the foundation that we have to lean on before we move to the next step. Are you still with me? Can you tell me you have to be saved? Well, okay, can you just repeat it after me then? Say, you got to be born again. So he says, listen, man, you're not even going to see it. Nicodemus says to him now, verse 4, we're almost there. Nicodemus says unto him, man, how can this be? How can a man be born when he is old? Can he, he cannot really enter uh, the second time into his mother's womb and be born and this translation says he says can he isn't that unusual I'm sorry strange y you would think uh, uh, Oaks of Mobile you would think that that uh, he was an educated man because of the position he held on the Sanhedrin council. But Jesus did not attack his position. Actually, he attacked his foundation of learning as a Jew. He says, he says, I'm not saying you're going to enter into your mother's womb. But I am saying you're going to experience birth again okay okay if I can teach this one oh Jesus I've been up a long time if I can teach this one Craig I, I promise you if I can just teach this point I shut my mouth all right now watch this watch this Here, here's the point I'm trying to teach here's the point I'm trying to teach uh when he says when he says that if I can just get you to 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 be born again uh, he makes the comparison to the same comparison uh, as he did with giving natural childbirth he, he, he says, although you cannot enter uh, the second time into your mother's womb and be born, but I want you to embrace the same principle. Are oh, you listening to me? <clears throat> someone, someone say he's about to say something. I can feel it. Now, 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 watch this because I've been present over all of my children uh, that I knew were my children at the time that they were born. Y'all going to get that going home. I was there with Alicia and our two. I, I was there with Albert and those two. Are you still listening to me? And, and, and so here's what I've learned. By being in the delivery room, I didn't have to do no work. Craig, I ain't do no work. No pushing. Wasn't no pain. Wasn't no strain. She. She did all the work are you here so I'm not gonna talk about that part but I want to talk about this part when the children came out can I be honest with you they didn't have to do no work <sighs> with those two Alvin when your nephew came out the first one had curly hair uh, black is, I mean, I mean, he was chocolate all over. Lips looked like he had already. Okay, okay. No. Uh, and, and, and so when I compared the first one coming out uh, with the last one came out, because when the last one came out, I almost wanted to get a DNA test. How, how can the first two be so chocolate? And then when we get to the last one, <laughs> yeah. She know that's been a long conversation for 21 years. It ain't, it ain't nothing. It didn't just install today. I'm just saying, only reason they ain't got a DNA, a, D, a DNA, and not a D, a D N. Am I saying it right? DNA? Yeah. Only reason they ain't got no swab. <laughs> only reason they ain't got no swab, cause I don't want to think about all the money I now already invested in that rascal. <laughs> Somebody gonna have to leave here. But my point I'm trying to teach you is that although I gave birth to them by way of their mother, they came in here all looking different. 
Okay, okay, y'all missed it. Y'all making me preach hard. I'm sorry. Let me let me try it this way. Let me try it this way. The mothers had to do the work, but each child came through the birth canal looking different. And the first thing that had to happen, Jamal, was then they had to be cleaned up. Uh, they, 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 they had to get their nose suctioned. Then they had to get their folk suctioned. But then after that, maybe they was popped. And automatically, they hollered, took their breath, and start living. Okay, I know you still ain't got it. I, 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 I'll get there. They took their breath and they start living and then, are you ready for it? They start growing. When Jesus says, you have to be born again, not of the water, but of the spirit, what Jesus is saying is, I need you to embrace the childbirth method. Here's a childbirth method because y'all missed it the first time. I'll try it again. You are getting ready to experience life and the life you're getting ready to experience, you didn't work for it. The life that you're getting ready to grow in was already done for you. You ain't got to do nothing to earn it but just be born into it. I don't care how much suction the Holy Ghost got to get out of your nostrils. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. I don't care how much bad taste he got to get out of your throat. That ain't your job. That's the job of the word. I wish I had help. Your job is to be born in it and grow through it. Y'all don't know when to shout. Look at your neighbor and said, neighbor, it's some stuff I just got to grow through. It's some stuff I just got to trust the word. It's some stuff I can't let go, but it is going to have to develop such a growth in me that as the Holy Ghost deals with me, I can turn it loose. He says, he says, I want you to keep the childbirth mechanism in your mind are you still here he says I need for you if you're going to be born again there are three things I need for you to grow in the word again anathon in the Greek anathon a -a 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 anathon uh, I appreciate it a-n hyphenated Greek uh, o-t-h-e-n Anathon. Three things. Number one, he says, you have to be born, first Greek word, again. Y'all missed it. Again. Again. I don't know what prevented your development yesterday. But if he gave you breath today, today is your again. If you've been in this walk for three years and you ain't crawling, he told me to tell you again. You missed it. You missed it. First of all, First of all, if you're not growing and developing, he simply says that I'm going to give you another opportunity. You have a again that's going on in your future. And I don't know about you, but if I were you, I will thank God and go crazy over the praise that I serve a master that has given me another chance to do it again. I messed up the last time, but this time I'm going to seize the opportunity that Jehovah God
law has given unto me. High five your neighbor and say again. Oh God, I know y'all don't want to touch nobody, but look at somebody and just say again. Yesterday is gone. The mess ups are gone. What you did yesterday is gone, but you better tell God thank you that he's given you a Another chance to do it again. Can anybody just tell God, thank you that I can do it again. Again. Second Greek word, China, is not only again, but he says anew. He says, he says, I'm giving you another opportunity again, but this opportunity is a fresh new start. Don't, don't get hung up because, because you missed the mark yesterday. But if you got breath in your body this morning, he gave you another chance to do it again. Can I say it like I feel it? You got a new chance. So if your walk with him is not like he wanted, he's giving you another and again and new. Third and finally, he says, I'm going to give you another chance again. I'm going to give you a new one again. But here's the third one. Are y'all ready for it? He says the word now, Anna, he says now it's going to come from above. Jesus is simply saying that if I give you the same new fresh chance and I expect for you to grow and to develop from the level that you were already born into, he says, I'm setting you up for failure. But this time, I'm going to get you set up from Anna again from above. In other words, what he's saying is that I'm getting ready to impart into you divine revelation and inspiration that can only come from above. Y'all missed your cutest shout. What he's simply saying is, I'm finna do a work in you that no man can take credit for. <laughs> what he says again is, I'm about to flip the script and turn this whole situation around, but I'm going to do it from above. What he's simply saying is, uh, thank you, now we can go on to the house. What he's simply saying is uh, that this next move uh, that I'm about to do in your life uh, is not going to be, uh, yes, a lateral move. Uh, I'm not going to trust your brother uh, to get you saved uh, at this season. Uh, but what I'm getting ready to do uh, is I'm getting ready ready to save you uh, from above. Can you look at your neighbor uh, for the last time, Sister Todd, uh, and tell your neighbor uh, this thing uh, is about to happen from uh, above. Uh, you Oh, that feel good right there. Is there anybody here uh, can tell God thank you uh, that this next move uh, that's about to happen in my life uh, is going to happen uh, from uh, above? Uh, can I uh, shout myself happy? Uh, thank you, Deacon Blunt. Uh, what I'm simply saying is uh, that God says... Uh, I'm getting ready to give you um, the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, to convict and convince uh, that his way uh, is the best way. Uh, and if I can get you um, uh, to confess uh, that his way uh, is the best way, uh, then you can come out of this thing uh, smelling like a rose. Uh, is there? Anybody here ready to come out?
out of this thing uh, smelling like a rose uh, is there anybody here ready to do it well brother pastor I'm trying to shift the folk uh, into position come on and get that mic Robbie I'm trying to shift the folk uh, into position uh, for me to shed my mouth but I need you uh, to understand one more thing stand up on your feet Isaiah 45 and 22 says look unto me all ye who wants to be saved when Isaiah says you gotta look John says like Moses was in the wilderness he took a brazen serpent stuck it on a stick held the stick up and everybody that was lost looked at the serpent and they got saved can I help you out in here all you got to do is look unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith look unto Jesus he can save you look unto Jesus when you look unto him here's what you got to see you got to see how he was wounded for my transgressions here's what you got to see how he was bruised for my iniquity here's what you got to see how they marched him right up Cameron here's what you got to see how they laid him down in a cold grave here's what you got to see how he got up early the third day morning with all power Holy Ghost power look unto him and be saved look unto him and be whole look unto him and he'll give you eternal life is there anybody here want to look unto him say yeah yeah uh. come on and give God some praise Come on, give God some praise in this house. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. If that's you today, if that's you today, this is your again time. If you have not received.